Hi, my name is Laurel Ruma, and I'm with O'Reilly Media. I'm here at Strata Hadoop World with Chandra Hill, who is an assistant professor at University of Pennsylvania. Hi, Chandra. Hi. Hi, good to see you. So today you gave a keynote talking about um, data from social media and television watching. So how did you even come into this field, and do people mistakenly think that you actually watch television all day or <laughs> are on the internet all day? Um, so first, how do I come into the field? So I've been doing data mining and machine learning research for a very long time, um, and I just kind of look for new problems. And I was watching The Voice many years ago now and noticed that they were incorporating social content and thought just that's really fascinating. Like, we should see what the response is. And the rest is history. So it really just started this new area of research for me, um, and we've been pushing on it in all kinds of directions. So it, you're not watching television, and you're not watching Twitter. So, so what do you do? Like, how does it, the data come into you? Right. So most of the data that we um, use to study the response to television on social media is via APIs from both Facebook and Twitter. So um, both of these sites make a lot of their data available through um, uh, both streaming APIs and APIs that you can go and get specific information about users. So by streaming, I mean you go in with a set of keywords and get all of the tweets about a particular topic as they relate to those keywords. And then you can also focus on subsets of users. So basically, all of the data that we use is out there in public for free, which is very nice. So you can get data at scale. Um, and we've been collecting it for um, over two years now. So we have this really nice data set about a lot of television shows that we can ask really interesting questions of. Do you choose the television shows specifically based on popularity or millions of viewers watch? Like, do you need a certain kind of amount of interest to actually have interesting data? Um, so, so yes. Um, there are two types of projects that I work on. So one um, set of projects are sort of more general, where we look at tweets about all TV shows, or at least a large number of them, um, and do things like build recommendation engines for users or um, use the tweets to predict viewership, right? So this is tweets about all shows or as many we can get our hands on. Um, there, we focus on just collecting as much data as we can about TV. On the other hand, we do focus on some shows or advertising events, and in those cases, it does matter that um, you know, there's enough interest on social media for it, to, for it to be interesting. So we can actually see response to different triggers. And while people talk a lot about TV shows, so it's, it's rare to sort of not have enough information about a TV show that's interesting, um, people don't talk as much about brands. So where um, we find ourselves limited sometimes is when we want to study response to brand advertising for events that are not major national um, events like the Super Bowl or Emmys, um, we're really limited in the data that we can collect. That's interesting, but if there is something by brand, can you narrow it down by region? Is it easier to do by geography or? So for all of the data that we collect, um, again, through these APIs, for a subset of the users, the geographic location is made available. So you can really ask questions about um, these users or sets of users and uh, that where you slice them both by um, gender or geography or, or anything that typically is interesting to advertisers. Still though, the more you slice it, the more data you need, right? Yeah. So, so that's part of the So an advertising event that's not the Super Bowl, right. would it be something kind of controversial? I'm thinking about the Susan G. Komen Foundation and or when mishaps happen to brands or is it something positive? Like do you usually see negative kind of response on social media to brands when it's not something like the Super Bowl. Yeah, so we haven't focused too much on that, yeah. frankly. Like, So mostly um, we follow major national events. So think of the presidential debates, um, the Super Bowl, the Emmys, the Grammys. And the reason for that is twofold. One, we need an, enough activity to do something interesting. And then two, we want to make sure that um, the campaigns are national. Um, because otherwise we wouldn't know, like we'd only know, because we do actually record the shows on our side and we would only know, I live in Philadelphia, which advertisements were shown in Philadelphia. Right, um, right. That's really interesting. So, let's geek out. So what do you use? 
in your lab? What, what languages, what platforms? Once you get this free and open data from all the APIs, yeah. how do you process it? Yeah, so I'd, I'd love to say that we have this like huge deep cluster, so sometimes we do some of that stuff, but frankly, the data aren't extremely large. It's large, we're talking about millions of users, um, billions of tweets, but you can really process that in parallel on a grid. So we use um, a grid computer where we oftentimes run a lot of the searches through the tweets in parallel. Mm -hmm. um, most of the code is written in Python, um, and we have a lot of the stuff automated now so that for almost anything that we need to do, whether it collect um, a subset of users and all of their friends and followers and all of their tweets, like we can pretty much do this easily because we've developed code to do it. And you're really focused on like large sets of data, so people shouldn't feel like their privacy is being violated. So you're looking for large patterns and large right. trends. Right. So from a research perspective, yeah. when you're at an academic institution, you really can't use um, uh, sort of identifying information, mm -hmm. right? So what we do is really um, look at ways to use the data mostly in aggregate form, right? So even when we build recommendation engines, we're saying, okay, let's take all of the tweets together to represent a show and then use that to calculate similarity between shows where you don't really need to know individual level data. We do make individual level predictions, but um, you don't need to know the identity of people. If, if we were firm, like we might do something different, but we're restricted in terms of the level of information. We could still we can probably use. figure out white women from 18 to 24, what they're watching, what they're saying. Yeah, but we throw away the ideas, right? So the point is more, we can do that. In fact, we do do a lot of um, sort of studies where we focus on differences by gender, so how men and women are responding differently, how they're influencing um, one another differently. Um, but once we sort of label people um, by math, name matching, so we have a list of female names, male names, we match the names. Once we do that matching, we throw the names away, right? So what's been the most surprising outcome, or you were just thought something was a little bit, bit funny, like you really didn't expect something to happen. Or is that um, even possible? So, so I, I'm, I, I'll just say what I'm really excited about. Yeah. So at the end I started talking about this check-in data. Um, so what's fascinating about that data is it's basically almost the equivalent of having set-top box data where you're tracking like what people are watching and instead of having it at um, the household level which is somewhat limiting for cable companies that are trying to make recommendations we have it at the individual level and um, we can do all kinds of things with just that data set so we can look at tweets and see whether people who are more engaged with shows whether they stick around longer um, similarly we can see whether if their friends check into these shows if they're more likely to stay so I think what's fascinating to me is like we have this huge data data set that we can ask all of these questions that TV shows have been interested in for a very long time, and the data requires no um, collaboration with firms, right? Which yeah. is awesome. Yeah, so you're really seen as like a neutral party, yeah. just putting this information out there. Yeah. That's really interesting. So, to wrap up, do you yourself find yourself tweeting and watching TV at the same time? <laughs> I don't. I, in <laughs> fact, I don't tweet that much at all. So I have um, a Twitter handle for our lab, and from there we kind of tweet social TV related news articles, but I'm not, I don't tweet about television. Uh, I just study it. That's very <laughs> cool. Well, thank you so much for coming to Strata Hadoop World. We really appreciate it.